We've discussed some of the core internet protocols. We've talked about IP, the internet protocol, the protocol that every computer on the internet has to speak. We also talked about TCP, which is typically part, considered part of the internet protocol suite since it's so common on the internet. And it's spoken by computers at the end of each connection to enable reliable ordered packet delivery. But there's a whole slew of different protocols on the internet that are trying to accomplish different things. And so there's this design question when we talk about how do we write software to work on the internet, which comes down to how should we arrange those protocols so they work well together. We typically refer to the way that protocols are, are arranged on the internet as the internet protocol stack. And I'll come, you'll see why we call it a stack. Some of the goals here are to make sure that each protocol doesn't have to duplicate functionality that's provided by other protocols. So we consider this to be separating concerns. Protocol A and protocol B could both be used together. They each are trying to accomplish different things. Um, if, the, if different protocols all had to implement all of the same features, those protocols would be much, much more complicated. And so the second thing we're trying to do is to reuse good ideas. We want a certain protocol to get really, really good at doing one particular thing, do that thing really well, and then allow other protocols to use that feature to enable their own types of communication. So let me show you the, the typical diagram of the internet protocol stack that you'll see. So here's the internet layer. Uh, this is where the IP protocol lives down here. There's actually a lower layer at the bottom uh, that's a network specific layer. So remember we talked about how the internet is a network of computer networks. The actual way that data moves around those networks can vary from network to network. But what unites them is right here in this layer or the internet layer. That's where everybody talks IP. I go up one level in the stack, and now we get to the other parts of the core internet protocol suite. That consists of TCP, which provides reliable ordered packet delivery, and UDP, uh, which is really just a thin layer on top of IP and doesn't provide reliability ordering or any of those features. It's useful in certain cases. Now, so this is sort of the core internet uh, protocol suite, and this is, if you think about the typical uh, division on a computer, this part of the protocol stack is provided by the operating system. So this is rolled out in Linux, it's rolled out in Windows. Every computer that's connected to the internet runs these protocols and they're implemented as part of the operating system itself. So that's an important note because these protocols, because of where they live on the computer, are very hard to change. If I want to update TCP, I have to update all of the Windows machines and all the Linux machines and every other machine on the internet. Uh, and that takes a long time. The rest of these protocols, now we start to, th uh, to start talking about stuff that you guys might be familiar with. So we get up to what's called the application layer and we start talking about protocols like HTTP, like FTP, like SMTP is a mail protocol. Um, so these protocols actually um, utilize these lower levels. And so the way that the protocols are stacked is designed to uh, represent the fact that HTTP doesn't have to worry about reliable delivery. It uses the TCP protocol at the lower level to implement reliable delivery. So when HTTP moves web pages around, it can rely on the fact that the TCP protocol that runs beneath it is going to ensure that the data arrives in order and it's going to reassemble the data that HTTP needs. Same thing with FTP uh, and all these other protocols that run the application layer. The other really important thing to notice here is that now we're above the operating system. So this is at the, these are called application protocols because they're implemented at the application level. So if I wanted to distribute a new application protocol, I don't have to change the operating system. I just have to get you to install a new application. And that's a lot, lot easier. And so the fact that um, the protocol stack has this particular boundary makes it very, very easy to innovate on the internet. Because if you want to distribute a new service, like for example, I think Dropbox has their own protocol for synchronizing files between multiple computers. The reason they can do that is because Dropbox has you install this application. That application uses protocols at the lower levels, but that application is free to implement its own protocol in any way that it wants to. So this is how we typically organize protocols on the internet. This is a core feature of the design of the internet, this internet, this protocol stack, where higher levels rely on features that are provided by lower levels of the protocol stack.